Yeah, I mean, obviously anytime we play Kansas City, it's going to be a good game. They're a really talented team. Um, I think we started off really strong on the front foot. We put away a few chances, and then the second half, the start of the second half, it wasn't how we wanted to come out and start. Uh, we knew that. We knew that wasn't us, and we're better than that. But luckily, you know, we didn't let another one in the goal, and we found our way back to playing like we know how to play and put away more chances. All right, we'll start questions off with Ryan Clark from Oregonian. Hey, so uh, congrats, obviously, on, on the first NWSL hat trick for you. Um, what did that moment mean to you? And then do you think you had a, a bit of an extra edge uh, with with the crowd, with the, the shush celebration uh, and everything else? Uh, what can you say about that? Yeah, no, it, it was a fun game to play, and I love coming and playing, you know, in a stadium where – the, the crowd is against you. I think it gives the team a little bit of edge, a little bit of energy, and um, we just kind of use that to our advantage. So it's it's pretty fun to put away a few goals and hear silence. <laughs> and, and what do you make of, of the high pressing style that uh, Mike has, has y'all playing these first couple of games and, and how it's really uh, gone to great effect? I mean, eight goals through, through two matches. Oh, I mean, it's it's awesome. I think this team has so much energy, and we want to put that, you know, into how we play, and it all starts with defense. So I think if we can continue that high press, and our midfield is so good at, you know, putting that pressure on their midfield and, and winning the ball, getting those little taps and touches, um, I think that's great, and I think that's something that will continue to help us have success. Next we'll go to Steph Young, The Athletic. Thank you. Hi, Sophia. Particularly in that last goal, I know it's, you know, kind of the end of the game. People are tired. It really felt like Kansas City was backing off you. You know, teammates are helping pull some attention in different directions. Is that what it felt like out there? Like they were just kind of giving you space to tee it up? Yeah, like the last, the last like 10 minutes I got it and I was like so shocked that I had more than two seconds to like think about what I was going to do. So that was definitely new to me. Um, I almost would prefer having less time because i that's how I like to play. That That's how I think best. But yeah, they kind of were dropping off and, and giving me a little more room to make a decision. Thank you. Do we have any more questions for Soph? Um, we'll go to Leah Bodwin of the Rose City Review. Hey, you can just talk about what the general vibe around the team is right now. Obviously, two like pretty convincing wins on score lines, and obviously having to like come back and fight a little more for this one. Um, and then going into um, obviously like national team stuff and more short turnarounds, kind of just like how you keep that momentum going. Yeah, I think the vibe around the team is is really good. We obviously are excited about this season, about starting fresh. We know, you know. Coming off of a really good year last year, we want to feed into that, but at the same time, you know, it's a new season and it's a new chance for us to kind of build this team into how we want it. Um, and I think in order to keep that momentum going during the international break, it, it comes down to individuals, um, you know, knowing their role, doing what they need to do, players who aren't on international duty, you know, keeping the team together, you know, getting the work in, in Portland and then us uh, internationally just doing what we got to do take care of business and coming back to the club ready to go and you know we have a long season ahead of us so just kind of you know staying energized and, and excited. All right we'll take one last question from Ryan and then Steph and then wrap it up to that. So Ryan go ahead. Yeah so if I was wondering if you could speak about um, Crystal's aggression and, and disruption in, in the midfield it seemed like she was mm -hmm. a big factor in that first half. Oh my God, Crystal had an amazing game. She was everywhere, uh, defensively, offensively, spinning people. She's such an amazing and talented player, and I think everyone saw that today. Uh, she was doing it all, and it's so much fun to play with her because you trust and you know that she's going to be right there with you when you go to press, and she's going to be right there with you when you're attacking. So she's someone that I really, really enjoy playing with. Steph, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just actually also wanted to ask about Hina Sagita. Um, you know, she took some some rough charges you all did today, but she looked, she helped make you guys look pretty fluid up there on the box. Just wondering how you feel about how that connection's going. I absolutely love Hina. I cannot say one bad thing about Hina. I think 
people don't really realize how talented she really is, how good she really is. I think we see it every day in practice, um, and you see glimpse of a, glimpses of it in the game, but that's just who she is. She does amazing stuff every, every time she touches the ball. So I love to play with Hina. I think we've gotten a really good relationship, and she kind of understands me and I understand her, and she's someone that can play the passes that not a lot of people can play. And, you know, I make the runs and she sees me and, you know, we don't even really have to communicate. We just look at each other and we know it, it's on. So I love playing with her and I can't wait to continue to build that relationship. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Recording in progress. Thank you for joining us and congrats on the goal and the win. Do you just want to start us off with your thoughts on the match? Yeah, I mean, I think the match had a little bit of everything. Um, I think the first half we were able to dictate play, um, both offensively and defensively, which was great. Um, I think we started a bit slower in the second half um, and gave them a, a bunch of momentum to where they got their goal. Um, but I think that's what's great about this team is we're resilient. Um, you know, we work through all challenges that the game kind of gives us, and we were able to kind of get our bearings and uh, get back into it and kind of control the game again. All right, we'll open it up to questions. We'll start out with Leo Bogwin. Hi, Crystal. Um, Leo from the Rose State Review. Um, yeah, you kind of just alluded this, to this in your opening statement, but I guess you guys really did dominate that first half, and then obviously Casey just came out really strong in the second half. Um, kind of from your perspective, what are you able to take away from especially the beginning of that second half as a team, and like, how do you think that will help you grow going forward? Yeah, I mean, I think that's just the nature of the NWSL. Um, you know, each game is competitive, each moment is going to be intense, and I think, um, you know, it's not the way we would love to start second halves, obviously, but I think how the team responds says a lot more about us riding the wave of momentum. Um, we were able to get back into it, um, you know, keep our heads high, and I think um, staying together, um, everyone was positive. I think that's really what this team is about, is just being able to solve problems and do it in a way that's positive and encouraging for everybody to kind of get on the same page. Right next, we'll go to Ryan Clark of the Oregonian. We're very disruptive in, in the midfield today and, and uh, played a key role throughout the, that first half, you know, setting up a lot of the opportunities for, for the club. I'm, I'm wondering how comfortable you feel now, you know, coming into this as a full season and, and embracing your role with this team. Yeah. Um... You know, for me, it's always a work in progress. Um, you know, those that know me knows that I am this versatile player that kind of has to wear multiple hats. And I think starting this year in the midfield, um, you know, last game was my first time playing in the midfield um, since last November. Um, so, you know, for me, it's always building on um, new opportunities. I think this game was um, exactly where I wanted it to be for myself. I was able to get involved offensively, defensively, and just be what my team needs me to be. And what can you say about uh, Soph's hat trick? You know, a great moment for her and what's going to obviously be an amazing career. Yeah, I mean, Soph is just out there doing Soph things. Um, I expect nothing less. Um, she's absolutely incredible. I think um, it's a testament to the team to be able to ride the wave of that, you know, 15, 20 minute period that I don't think we had momentum. I think um, when we were able to gain that back, we were able to get her in positions for, you know, her to just do the things that she does best, which is shine on the field. Next, we'll go to Steph Young of The Athletic. Uh, thank you. Hi, Crystal. Uh, I wanted to ask you about, you know, your work with Sink in front of you, like more of that roaming figure who's able to find space. You're setting the tempo a little bit deeper underneath her. Um, what you're seeing there and how you feel about that, you know, partnership as it continues to evolve. Yeah, um, I'd like to believe our midfield's more of a, you know, fluid kind of dynamic midfield at times. I think, um, you know, there's times where Sink is higher than me. There's times where she's lower than me. I think it's just feeling the space out and, you know, playing to each other's strengths, um, I think is really important. And, you know, it's only the second game of the season, but I think um, every game we're, you know, learning something new about each other, about our, our unit. Um, and I think each game we're just going to, you know, take the challenges that we, we go through and, and be able to build on that for the next game. And then just as a quick follow-up, especially in the first half, it really looked like, you know, you and Sink and the rest of the players in that fluid movement were, were very much able to control a lot of the width around KC deep in their own territory. Um, just wondering how you felt about, did it feel good out there? Maybe it's an obvious answer, but, you know, being able to control that. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I 
literally love playing in the midfield. It's honestly where I feel like I'm most authentic to who I am as a player. Um, and when I'm able to connect with the forwards to be able to put them in the best position to succeed, um, it just it fills me with so much joy. Um, and that's the kind of player that I am. I honestly love connecting with others. I love setting people up to be able to shine and do the things that they want to do on the field. And I think that's really what I felt all of the first half was just us connecting and people um, making the right passes, making the right decisions. And even if it didn't work out, it was collectively um, just getting back on the same page and, and working hard to, to win the ball back. Thank you. Take one last question from Paul Danzer of the Portland Tribune. Hey, Crystal, well, I'm just curious about how you guys have been adapted to Mike's pressure, pressing philosophy, and how much fun is that, and how much work is that, and how much is that um, contributing to the success these first two weeks? Yeah, um, great question. Um, you know, we're definitely a team that wants to dictate play, um, both offensively, defensively. So, you know, when we don't have the ball, we definitely work our hardest to be able to uh, win it as early as possible. And even if that's not the case, um, you know, collectively, we just are able to regain, um, you know, our shape and be able to win this, the next ball. So I think it's really important that we are um, always trying to press the ball as high as possible. But we obviously know teams are good. They're going to be able to play out occasionally. And even when that happens, we, you know, just stay, stay as a unit and we work hard to win it back the next play. Right, we will wrap it joining us. Can I push this back? Yeah, yeah let's adjust your, your head in the frame. Is that better, Joe? Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Congrats on the result. Why don't you just start us off with your thoughts on today's match? Uh, yeah, really happy with the results. First half, thought we were terrific. Um, obviously, didn't start the second half the way we wanted. Credit to KC. Obviously, they fixed some things. They came up with a different energy. Uh, which we didn't match. We had to ride that storm. Thankfully, we rode it quick enough to get back on the front foot and happy with the way we finished the game. All right, we will start things off with Ryan Clark of the Oregonian. Mike, obviously, congrats on, on the win. What can you say about uh, Sophia Smith's performance? Obviously, first uh, NWSL hat trick for her. Yeah, um, I don't know if I need to say much, to be honest. Like, I think her actions speak for herself. Um, obviously she's a threat in different types of moments. You saw first half how she linked, got in behind, just very dynamic. And then, I mean, if you look at the, the second half, we really felt once we broke their line of pressure and got so running at them, really their centre backs shown tendencies to just get on the back foot. And she just kept dribbling. And I think if you give Soph that space, nine times out of 10, she's gonna hurt you. Um, but I'm sure I know in Soph she'll, she'll be hoping that she might have got one or two more in the first half, but yeah. I don't know if there's much to say outside of her, outside of her performance. Right, and um, you know, this high pressing style seems to be working very well for this group given the personnel, given, given how they've thrived in it. That first half obviously being a good example. Um, what can, can you say about maybe that approach and whether you, you want to embrace that going forward with this group? Yeah, I mean, I think we spoke in the off-season, like the pre-season, sorry, around how we did want to, I think, evolve as a team. Um, I think they've got a front-footed nature amongst the personalities that we have in the team. I think they're more comfortable there. Um, obviously, I've added a bit of my nuance in terms of that, but it's, it's tough when we're working on it and you can be a bit biased in terms of the success of it. But I think to, to realise that you're acknowledging that and seeing that in the first half obviously speaks volumes to, to where it is and the work that they've done. But it's something we want to stay on the front foot. You saw second half, we were passive at the beginning. We were a yard off them, didn't match their energy. And it, yeah, we look a shadow of who we really want to be. All right, we'll go to Steph Young of The Athletic. Steph, are you there? Yeah, I think you unmuted me and then I remuted myself, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Hi coach, uh, as you just mentioned, in the second half, it took a minute to adjust to Kansas City, trying to exploit that space behind when you are high up. Um, what do you think of the team's ability to adjust on the fly and your staff's ability to kind of take that in and, and not panic and just, you know, play out the rest of the half? 
Yeah, I mean, I think you can look at it two ways. Maybe we didn't adjust quick enough and they've scored. Um, maybe we adjusted at the right time and they got a response. Um, I think where I'm at right now is probably a bit of reflection from my part and the staff's part at half time. Did we did we prep them with the right messaging to get them prepared for the second half? I've told the group at the end of the game we weren't us, we were a yard off them. So I think it's not just the players, I think us as a staff and myself have to have to have a look at that to see did we prep them well enough for the second half and then did we respond quick enough? Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, and as a follow up, this is what, eight goals in two games, um, a plus seven goal differential already. But you know, obviously, you have a tons of experienced players who can help with this. But what's the discussion about you know managing expectations and like taking each game as its own individual kind of encounter? Yeah, nobody's getting carried away. Um, I think simple messages while focusing on us. Um, obviously, there's different opposition in front way each week, but. We can't focus on that, we have to respect what opponents bring, but we're just trying to, to get better each game, what that looks like and how we adapt, but yeah, nobody's getting carried away to two games in the season. Focus is we'll take a couple of days off, refresh, we've got players leaving for international duty and then we'll, we'll get back up and try to improve on this performance. We'll go to Leah Bodwin of the Rose City Review. Hi, Coach. Um, you kind of just touched on this, but obviously international break coming up and then you have a, a game and then midweek Challenge Cup game and then another game. Um, so I guess kind of curious how you're, what the plan is to, like, to keep the cohesion um, that we've seen in the team these first couple of games, um, just like through all that. Yeah, I mean, I think the key is for us to be consistent. Um, just in terms of the environment that we create every day, the expectations that we have the players is a big piece. Um, regardless of who's in or who's not, that doesn't change for us in terms of how we operate and what we expect. So there's that element and then it's how we reintegrate the internationals back. Uh, hopefully they'll all come back healthy and, and safe. And then as we get closer to that and learn what minutes they've played away, then we'll just have to plan accordingly. But yeah, biggest message is we refresh, we re-energize and we stay consistent with the work that we do. And then a quick second question. Um, we saw Klingo go down kind of toward the end of the game and then you subbed her out for Reina, uh, like right ahead of stoppage time. Was that just a precautionary sub? Is she okay? Um, I think Reina was always on the radar for us. Kling seems to be fine. Uh, took quite a whack to the, to the throat area it looked like, but yeah, Kling seems to come out of the game well, um, but I think again it just shows to the depth that we have in terms of the players that we can bring on off the bench to, to close out the game. Right, we will wrap it there. Thank you for your time, coach, and safe travels.